Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my RPG series. Now, in the last episode, we were starting to discuss what kind of a functionality you could have around listening for a gameplay tag, for example. That is what we will be building upon today. So today we will actually be creating experience points. And how we will do this is first we go to RPG and we say we want to create a new folder. We call this XP and we will go into it. So we want to have <clears throat> some ability to say uh, something that dies should award experience points to whoever killed it. And to do that, we're going to be encapsulating the functionality in a component. So we will be doing like before, we go to Blueprint and we say add an active component. We'll call this BPC underscore XP. So this is our experience points component. We will immediately go to our character and say BPC XP and add that component to our character because uh, experience is of interest for him. Uh, going back to our uh, folder here, we open up the BPC XP, and we remove the tick. And here, we can say that when something is dead, that is the point when we want to award some experience points. So, a blueprint component belongs to an actor. So if this is a character that dies, and by character I mean just a... Uh, so a, a, an object in the world, so an actor. It could be like a, a pawn controlled by an AI, it could be a player, it could be an actor in the world that for some other reason awards XP or something like that. You can add this component to that thing and it would be able to award experience points. So to do that you go and first find out who this is. So we type in get owner. This gives us the actor object of whoever has this component on it. Then we can say that we want to <clears throat> get component by class and we can now choose our gameplay BPC gameplay tags uh, component. And the reason we choose this is because we can now drag out from that one and say add listener like so. And here we can now choose to listen to the dead tag. So whenever the dead tag happens, essentially uh, this thing dies, then we can react upon it. Now you might be thinking, why, why don't we do this by um, hooking onto the damage taken event or something like that? Well, uh, you might be able to get this tag in a different way. Maybe there's a spell that instantly kills you but doesn't deal damage or a rock that falls upon you that doesn't do damage but instantly kills you or something like that. A different form that can potentially kill you and yet we want it to be able to react to it. So that's why we're listening to the actual state instead. So we'll drag off the event, we'll choose an add event, add custom event and we'll say dead state updated because that's what's happened at this point. Then we know that we have here a context, we can break this. And this is the information that we have in here. Among this, uh, what we're going to be getting back here is active tags. Active tags is supposed to be a gameplay tag container. So we can say has tag to compare if it has a specific tag in it. Since we don't know if this is a dead tag being added or removed, we need to check if it still has the tag at this point when we're getting notified of it. So adding a branch, we can now validate against this so if it has that tag then we can do something here so we want to know whoever killed us we want to say you should be getting some experience points so first off we can make a variable we can say um, xp to award that's not how we spell xp like so that's not how we spell xp either Actually, it is. Never mind. Um, and we want this to be something like um, an integer, I suppose, a whole value. So we'll choose. Uh, or should we have a float? Let's choose a float. 
So we have a float here, and that's the amount of XP that we should be awarding. It's currently set to default zero, and that is fine. The thing is, now we have this part here where we're breaking out this context, but we're not actually filling this in any point. And that's what we need to go and fix first. So going back to our gameplay tags, and going back to our adding tag, at this point, we have our tag and our origin, but we don't have the last part, which is our active tags. And we do know that we have this common uh, bit of code that is notify tag change that is going to be called both for add tag and remove tag. So going in here, this might actually be a good point for us to uh, create this information. So what we'll do is before we actually do anything else here, we'll determine what kind of a context we have here. Just a helper function, essentially. So we'll say create context. Now, this context won't have a lot of functionality and not a lot of information, but it, what it will do is since we have the information of a context tag, we'll add that here as an input and we'll make sure that it is of a gameplay tag and that is what it is, good. We also know that we want to have an origin, which is what we had before, so that's an S underscore origin structure, and we call that origin. And from here, we can also type return to get a node, and what we want to have back here is a S gameplay tag context, or S gameplay context is what we called it, and we'll call it uh, gameplay context. Dragging out from that, we can now choose make gameplay text, gameplay context, which exposes all the information that we need to know or send. So we'll hook up our context tag, we'll hook up our origin, and we'll drag out our active tags over here, and we'll hook it together like so. And now we have the functionality of creating a context essentially. We we'll compile and save. We go back. In our notify tag changed, we now call on our create context. We'll hook it up like so. The tag to listen for is the context tag. And we don't have an origin in here. So we'll drag out from origin and drag it to the notify tag changed, like so. And to make this a little bit cleaner, we can also move this up here so we can see that this node is going here. And we'll hook this up like so. And now that we have added origin here, we can compile, save, and go back again, and we get to the notify change now. Now we're in the remove tag function, or I am at least, and you can see that we have origin over here. We also have origin over here. Now we could drag this node all the way over here if we wanted to, but we don't need to. Since this is an input, we can just type in here, get origin, and this will be whatever value is coming in from here, actually. So we'll just hook it up like so and have a little bit less of a mess here. Compile and save, going to add a tag, we're going to be doing the same thing. So get origin, like so, and that should be that. So now we know that whatever information we're getting into this functionality we're actually sending away. The important part now is to make sure that all the ones that are actually adding tags are sending this information themselves. So in our case we have the ability here to add the tag and the ability over here to remove the tag. So in these cases we want to make sure that we are also sending the information here. So in this case we have a third person character. That would be the actor that is adding the tag in this case. And the controller here would be the instigator controller. So of this actor, this is the instigator controller, meaning essentially who is causing this to do something, essentially. Uh, doing the same thing over here for the removing, like so. We have now managed to send this information further. And this is a part that is going to be needed for all the different codes that want to have an effect on removing and adding tags, of course, if you want to have the information um, be available for later uh, down the road. 
So, going back to our blueprint component XP now. We now know that we're sending out information here from the origin, which contains the information that we need. Because if we break this and we do it like so, we now have a controller over here. And the controller is the one who caused us to die. So the controller is the one who should be getting XP. But the controller itself doesn't have XP. So what we do is we first of all check if it is valid. Not like so. We want to have the valid with the question mark because that one gives us a execution node immediately. So if it is that we're dead and the controller is valid, then we want to get the controlled pawn of this controller. So whatever it is controlling. And that one we want to get the component by class from. And the class we want to get is the BPC XP. Because that is where we're actually storing experience points. And then we want to say this one should get some experience points. But we don't have any functionality to actually uh, give experience points yet. So let's add that. Going to our event graph, for example. Open graph. Okay, I'm already here. Um, let's do a custom event. So I'm typing custom event. Call it award XP. So this is the function that you call on when you want to award experience points. And what it takes as an input would be uh, a float value, which would be the awarded XP. File and save. So we need to have some XP added to some other XP now. So we create another variable. We call it um, current XP. Let's be consistent and have a big P there. Uh, like so, we drag this out. And we say we want to add whatever value is coming in as awarded XP to be our XP. And then we want to set the new value to be what that mathematical result would be. Like so. And now we have awarded that XP, essentially. But we haven't called upon it yet. So we'll go over here back again at the graph where we were. And we say that on valid, meaning that this is a an actor that has the XP component. We probably want to have a valid check here as well, actually. Like so we can now say award XP. And the value here for the amount to award is, of course, uh, the variable that we have for XP to award, like so. And there we have it. The first opportunity to award some uh, functionality, in this case XP, to uh, the result of a uh, tag being changed. So let's see if this works. To make this easier, we'll expose our current XP so we can see what it is in runtime in the editor. And we'll have it for zero to begin with, so we know that it, that is what uh, the current XP to start with is. We'll say that the, award to, uh, the XP amount to award would be 100. Compile. Which means that, in this case, we don't, we don't have a lot of uh, different characters and actors to interact with, so we will just be adding the dead tag ourselves to ourselves and hopefully then that means that it should be awarding 100 XP to ourselves which we then can see. So let's see if that works. We go in here, we bind event on dead just to see that it will happen. We add the, uh, the stack and now we should be able to go and check our character and we should be able to find Uh, I can't see it. Uh, 
Uh, uh, uh, I guess we'll have to go to the component itself. Award 100 current XP 0. Okay, so that didn't work. Let's debug this and see what happened. So let's go to our dead state update here, see if this is actually being called. We don't actually, I bound this event over here to get this text to, to type, but we don't need to do that. That was just to see that it was happening. This one should be binding it on, um, on the beginning. So let's play and we type uh, press one to add a tag. We check against our tag container. It says it does not contain the tag uh, state dead. Uh, so let's see why that is because that should not be true we need to go back further we need to go back to our where we're sending our information which is the notify change state so we'll add a breakpoint over here play we add a tag notify change state says that we have a tag to listen for that state dead and the origin is uh, player controller and third person character which all seems fine ah of course um, the gameplay context that we created over here we're not actually sending in our event dispatcher this is a problem we of course need to send the information as well so we'll drag it up a little bit make it a little bit more disconnected like so let's try this again we'll add it we'll resume from here we'll get over here it checks, it says that it does now contain the, the tag. And let's resume and see what happens if we now check our character. Uh, third person character, we go to our blueprint component and we can see that our current XP is now 100. So we have been able to award ourselves 100 for killing ourselves essentially. So good job on that. I think this is a good place to start, stop. So. <laughs> Let's do that, and I hope to see you in the next episode. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.